On the 17th of April, a battery of 155 millimeter howitzers prepares to fire a mission in support of 25th Infantry Division troops engaged in Operation Longfellow. The target is an area being prepared as a landing zone in Kantum province. Final instructions come from the FDC as the big tube artillery is prepared for firing. The battery is firing from positions near Duck To, 480 kilometers north-northeast of Saigon. Elevation adjustments are completed and the firing commences. Now the entire battery is in action. Even as this barrage fire is covering the landing zone area, Tropic Lightning troops are mounting their assault helicopters for a successful move to the forward landing zone. During the period 29 April through 1 May, additional units of the 25th Infantry Division were filmed as they arrived at the seaport of Bung Tau, Republic of Vietnam. In a shuttle service, LCTs ferry the men from their troop ships to the beach. On shore, the division band greets the landing troops. The beachhead is located some 64 kilometers southeast of the capital city of Saigon. As the Tropic Lightning troops reach the beach, phase one of Operation Moonlight is completed. Phase two of the massive deployment is to move the Hawaiian-based outfit inland to their new base of operations at Kushi. For the trip to the division's headquarters in Vietnam, 96 kilometers to the northwest, the arriving elements are taken to nearby Vung Tau airstrip. They will be flown from here to Ku Shi as the more than 4,000 new troops complete the final phase of Operation Moonlight. Camp Alpha situated at Tonsonut on the outskirts of Saigon, is the trans-shipping center for both incoming and outgoing troops of the 173rd Airborne Brigade in South Vietnam. On this day, early in May, a group of replacements, fresh from stateside, load aboard buses for the 28-kilometer drive to Benhoa. Arriving at the 173rd base camp at Benhoa, the new men are completely processed by the personnel of the administration company. Briefing and unit assignments are followed by stops at record section and finance. After processing, the replacement soldiers board waiting trucks and are taken to their respective units. For them, the war against the Viet Cong is about to begin. At the same time, other men are being rotated back to Konas. No troops are held overnight at the processing center, and all are soon on their way. For the returnees, Camp Alpha is the gateway to home. Here, their transportation back to the States is arranged. For these veterans of the Vietnam campaign, a long-awaited moment has arrived. Camp McDermott, headquarters for Field Force 1 Vietnam, is located at Nha Trong, 40 kilometers north of Cameron Bay. The old Grand Hotel now serves as the headquarters building for the command. The camp, opened on 13 February, is shown here in film shot on the 3rd of May. During the 10 weeks the camp has been in existence, it has been greatly expanded to handle thousands of troops. A construction program is going forward to convert from tents to frame buildings, and concrete foundations have already been poured for many of the structures. One of the units assigned to Camp McDermott is an MP company. The military police not only provide security for the headquarters here,
but they perform many of the same type of duties as they would in the United States. As the camp has grown, the MPs find their activities increasing. Speeders along the highway between the camp and the town of Natrong are given tickets just as anywhere else. For many years, Natrong has been a popular coastal resort city and is densely populated. Speeding is out. When out on patrol, the military police are in constant communication with MP headquarters, often receive instructions to be on the lookout for overdue or AWOL individuals. Usually, these persons are in town. Natrong, once noted for its beautiful beaches, hotels, and temples, has undergone certain changes as local businessmen vie for the money of Camp McDermott soldiers. Colorful Lily's Lounge and the robust Los Angeles Bar are typical examples of the new fun places. To the MPs, the gaudy bistros are frequently the source of trouble and are under continuous surveillance. Passing through the red velvet portal of this night and day spot, the MPs check to make sure no military personnel are patronizing the bar during duty hours. The place is empty, so the MPs mount up to continue the patrol. Incidents of a serious nature are occurring less and less as the MP patrols increase. Camp Radcliffe, home of the 1st Air Cavalry Division, is located near on K. Here on 6 May, presentation of division colors from Major General Harry W. O. Kennard, outgoing commander, to Major General John Norton, formally launches a change of command ceremony during which General Norton will assume leadership of the Air Mobile Division. General Norton is officially installed by Lieutenant General Gene E. Angler, Deputy Commanding General, U.S. Army Vietnam, and Major General Stanley R. Larson, Commanding General, Headquarters, Field Force One. As troops of the 1st Air Cavalry stand in formation, the new commander troops the line. 1st Cavalrymen salute their new commanding general as the divisions and the nation's flags fly in the brilliant sunlight. General Norton's most recent assignment was as Deputy Commanding General of U.S. Army Vietnam. General Kennard is assuming temporary command of Field Forces One, while General Larson is on leave. After this temporary duty, General Kennard will return to the United States for reassignment. As a climax, division helicopters pay tribute to their new commander and bid farewell to General Kennard, who helped develop the air mobile concept and was the first commander to direct its use in combat. Approximately once every two weeks, a freighter completes the journey from New Orleans to the Dominican Republic, where it unloads enough food and other supplies to support the 7,000 or more troops who make up the United States contingent of the 8,000-plus Inter-American Peace Force. There are 30 dozen eggs in each of these cartons. Perishables are unloaded first and transported in refrigerator vans, a prime necessity in this subtropical climate. All supplies, perishable or not, are taken to the fairgrounds depot complex of the 627th Supply and Service Battalion. These experienced supply experts know that in this climate, food must be placed immediately in cold storage lockers. Eggs, like all foods, can go bad during shipment. To protect the health of the troops, an army veterinarian is assigned to inspect each shipment of perishables that arrives. Producing daily bakery products is another function of the supply and service battalion. Here, battalion bakers place dough in a molder divider assembly to make two-pound loaves. 
The bread is then baked for 45 minutes and permitted to cool. French, rye, whole wheat and raisin bread are among the bakery products the battalion supplies to their hungry customers. Inside this enclosure, the battalion's 649th Supply and Service Company operates a 7,000 customer laundry. Care and consideration become second nature to men whose official battalion and company designations contain the word service. The battalion's 67th Maintenance Support Company frequently stops U.S. Army vehicles on the highway, spot checking them to see if any repairs are needed. Minor repairs are made by the unit motor pool. For major repairs, vehicles are sent to the repair tents of the maintenance support company. Each vehicle, repaired and virtually rebuilt, will be returned to its unit in peak operating condition. These jeeps, carefully tuned and checked by the maintenance company, will be donated by aid to the Dominican National Police. They symbolize the wide spectrum of responsibility which faces U.S. Army supply and service personnel in the Dominican Republic. General de Division F. Binoche of France, Major General Sir John Nelson of England, and Major General John F. Franklin, USA, attend the Allied Forces Day celebration in West Berlin on 14 May. Governing Mayor Vili Brandt and family are next to arrive. The mayor greets the commanding generals on behalf of the city. Colors are born the length of the parade route, the Strasse des Siebsen Juni, west to Ernst Reuter Platz, then along Bismarckstrasse. A combination of three military bands, the Pipes and Band of the 1st Battalion, the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers Band, and the Royal Tank Regiment Cambrai Band, execute the traditional British march maneuver, left wheel. Nine military bands participate in the overall parade. The Gendarmerie Nationale of France, with origins dating back to the Gallo-Roman era, leads the mechanized section of the parade with elements of the Gendarmerie Mobile. In the second portion of the parade, A Squadron of the Queen's Own Hussars marches the route. Various motorized units participate. The original division uniform is worn by the 6th U.S. Army Infantry Division Color Guard. The state flags of the 50 states of the USA are carried by men of the Berlin Brigade's special troops. An M60 US tank from the 40th Armor salutes as it passes the reviewing stand. Large crowds attend the biggest Allied event of the year, which demonstrates the unity and might of the Allied partners for peace in Berlin. The Thailand Armed Forces Military Research and Development Center in Bangkok is seeking a practical individual combat ration for their troops. They are working in cooperation with the U.S. Advanced Research Projects Agency Field Unit in Thailand and with the Thai Preserved Foods Organization. The research and development stages are completed. A limited pilot production line is now turning out a hundred individual three meal rations a day. When new machines are received this year, the output will rise to 2,000 units. The packages contain dried rice, sliced dried fish, a Thai soup of cabbage and vegetables, dried beef, fish powder, and other dehydrated items. Dessert is a sugar peanut candy bar. Various sealed packets making up the individual three meal ration are assembled and placed in clear plastic bags which are also sealed. The dry food is therefore doubly protected against tropical humidity which might otherwise spoil it.
Throughout the whole process, quality control is maintained in this modern, well-equipped laboratory. It is operated by the Preserved Foods Organization at Cassart University near Bangkok. The laboratory has been working on the project for the past 18 months. Thai soldiers sample the rations. When hot water is added to 250 grams of rice in waterproof bags, it becomes 750 grams, ready to eat in 10 minutes. Special tablets placed under the canteen cups heat the water. Powdered soup poured into cups of hot water is also ready in a few minutes. The rations shown here by Dr. Amara, the director of the project, have been field tested by various Royal Thai armed forces and were favorably received. This is Main Street, Fayetteville, North Carolina. The 150-year-old Fayetteville Observer is the hometown newspaper for thousands of members of the 82nd Airborne Division stationed in the Dominican Republic. They left their families and their loved ones in the Fort Bragg, Fayetteville area when they were ordered to Santo Domingo to restore peace a year ago. The Army has made arrangements for 1,000 copies a day of the Observer to be sent to the soldiers who call North Carolina a second home. Near the large military base at Fort Bragg is Pope Air Force Base, whose Dominican Republic terminal facilities are used nightly by a military courier jet to get the newspapers to the readers in Santo Domingo. Within hours, the aircraft carrying the newspapers lands at the headquarters of the United States forces in the Dominican Republic. From the tail section of the C-130, the newspapers are offloaded. The papers with all the news of the activities and interests of the families back home are dropped at the various distribution points in the Camp Randall and Santo Domingo area. The Observer is distributed on a basis of one copy for every seven men and reaches soldiers everywhere ranging from the headquarters section of the IAPF to 82nd Division headquarters and units out on special duty. Within 24 hours, the Observer is in the hands of its readers in the Dominican Republic. The morale factor is a large one. In a foreign country where the soldier is away from the ones he loves and where the inhabitants speak an unfamiliar language, the Fayetteville Observer is like a daily letter from home. The first anniversary of the formation of the Inter-American Peace Force is held on 6 May. To celebrate this, Sports events are scheduled between the five Latin members and the U.S. IAPF forces in the Dominican Republic. In soccer, Paraguay swamps the Yanks 11 to nothing. In the more familiar game of basketball, the U.S. defeats a Brazilian Nicaraguan team 83 to 27. The game at the Brazilian battalion camp is watched by the IAPF's commanding officer, Brazilian General Alvaro Braca, and his deputy, Brigadier General Robert R. Linville, U.S. Army. The baseball game also goes to the North Americans, as Nicaragua is shut out by the lopsided score of 21 to nothing. On another field, the Brazilians revenge themselves against the U.S. forces in volleyball, whipping the Yanks in two sets, 15-5 and 15-2. But here, it's a long home run, good in any park for more U.S. team runs. The following day, trophies donated by the Brazilian government are presented by General Braca to the team winners at the IAPF headquarters. The awards will provide memories of a welcome change from the routine policing and peacekeeping duties of the Inter-American Peace Force.
in Trieste, Italy on 8 May at the Officers Club of the Vittorio Emanuela Cassern, competitors are welcomed by General Nani of Italy to the boxing matches of the Council International des Sports Militaires, CISM. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Haynes, U.S. Air Force, chief of the U.S. delegation, is seen with representatives of other countries. On the following day, delegates draw lots to determine their position in the competition. The lightweight drawing is followed by another drawing for featherweights. The preliminaries begin on 10 May. Flyweight Marbley, U.S. Army, defeats Yadagar of Turkey. All U.S. boxers wear white with blue stripes. The next bout sees Albert Johnson, U.S. Navy, against Jorge of Spain in the featherweight division. To qualify for entry, SISM contestants must be in active military service. The Trieste Palace of Sports sees Marine Corporal Art Redden decision Ockheism of Holland in the light heavyweight preliminaries. On 14 May, the finals are held. Featherweight Robinson of the Navy is seen again, this time matched with Song Un of Korea. In this event, Robinson wins by a knockout in the third round. Victoria of Army boxes to a decision over Hang Sok of Korea in the lightweight class. SISM's international sporting events seek to improve the sport. Army's James Wallington and Zampieri of Italy draw close attention as they clash in the light welter event. For the light heavyweight finals, Marine Corporal Redden returns against Barbiera of Italy and wins on a TKO. In the tournament's final match, U.S. Navy heavyweight Richard Pettigrew meets Piccanale of Italy and wins by a decision. Various dignitaries present medals to the winners of each division. U.S. contenders take four gold and two silver medals. 